Evening everyone and welcome to tonight's webinar. You were expecting to have Paul on tonight's call but a uh, very rare occasion he has completely lost his voice. He went <clears throat> and saw the doctor today and he's got just a little bit more than a whisper which wouldn't be great for a webinar and he's been uh, under doctor's instructions to rest up. So I'm jumping back in and more than ha happy and capable of taking you through tonight's session on selling online. So I did mention to you on uh, the Facebook group, I believe, that even if you're not selling something online and you're even on tonight going, I don't know even know if tonight's going to be relevant to me, you know, I sell massages, for instance. How on earth am I going to sell those online? Please, I've, I'm really glad you joined us and please, as always, keep an open mind because I might just trigger some ideas on stuff you can sell that you hadn't even thought be possible. Also, I always say throughout this program, knowledge is not lost. So even if you're not at a point where you have that idea that's already formulated or you can't sell something now, I'm giving you this knowledge that won't be lost. You can use it again in the future or maybe even share it with someone that might find it helpful. So without further ado, let's launch into tonight's content. So I've sold a few things online over the years and my very first e-commerce website was back in the year 2000. 2000? 2000? 2001. Hang on, let me get this straight. No, I launched a magazine uh, website in London around 2000, 2001, and it was the year 2002 that I decided to hand code a HTML website and sell some t-shirts online. Why did I do that? Well, I was based in London and traveling around the world, and I am a Kiwi originally, as you know, and I um, was really proud of our culture and the fact that we have an indigenous language, that there are things in the New Zealand, uh, in New Zealand and in the New Zealand culture and language that there is only one word for it. It's a Maori word. And some of those things are also unique to New Zealand. Things like kiwi, kete, which is a hand-woven bag, uh, weta, which is an insect, and uh, pawa, which is abalone, but we only call it pawa in New Zealand. So I decided after visiting tourism shops and wanting to get t-shirts and presents for my friends and discovering there were these big, thick-necked, horrible-looking things with, at the time, no joke, cartoons of sheep and things like that on it, I thought we have to be able to do it better than that. So I decided to create my range. And um, I got it all created and I got the website launched. It wasn't that flash, but hey, it worked. And I used a thing called PayPal. And I remember back then people going, oh, transacting online that might get intercepted. You might lose your credit card details. Do your customers feel safe online? And to be perfectly honest, it was a little bit of an uphill battle then because I did feel like some people didn't want to put their credit card online. It was all a bit scary for them. But you know what, kind of I was a person smiling because people, some people did put their credit cards online and I did make money online. And what I ended up doing, and I, I guess it was probably where I first discovered my passion for online and the fact that it could give you a really great lifestyle, is I launched the business. I had a production uh, company making the t-shirts in New Zealand. I left my mother and my sister with instructions of how to post them and what to charge and all of that. And I was taking the orders online and I buggered off to South America. And I remember sitting in an internet cafe, getting orders, and then also discovering that I'd won a government grant and that I'd won a website award that I'd applied for before I left. And I was kind of doing, you know, fist pumps in the air, trying not to shout too loud, just me by myself in this internet cafe, again, back in the day, where you had to go to a little internet cafe just to get online and on a computer because you didn't really travel with a laptop then. So that was my first foray into an online business, and I sold that business from starting it from scratch, no investment, just some little bit of cash I had, uh, sold it for five figures. So look, it's not huge money, but it did up my kitchen, and it was pretty cool to be able to do that from just starting an online business selling t-shirts. And the people who bought it weren't as clever as me. They didn't know how to make a website, they didn't know how to make an e-commerce, and they didn't come up with that idea, so I gave that to them, uh, the stock, the website, the database, the manual I created, which is always a big part of the value of a business in that business which was called Tikanga T-shirts. I've also sold subscriptions. So usually when I start talking about selling stuff online, people's first um, thought is, oh yeah, tangible products, stuff you have to ship. And you can certainly do that online. But you can sell the intangibles. And people are definitely more than happy to pay for that stuff now, probably more so than ever. So subscriptions, it could be a subscription to your digital magazine, could be a subscription to your newsletter if it's got something really exclusive um, 
could be a subscription to regularly receive stuff. So here's a business idea for you. When I was in Silicon Valley in 2013, um, a lot of people were really busy there and they work really hard and uh, they love it because they're working at places like LinkedIn and Facebook and they've got free food and they get free buses there and there's free haircuts and it's a pretty cool place to be. I can see why they don't want to leave. But because of this, they don't have a lot of time to do standard kind of uh which we call them errands. So, for instance, girls don't always have time to shop, believe it or not. So guess where they shop? Online. Not only that, they don't want to get around to shopping. They just want stuff to turn up. So there were models turning up, uh, business models that is, not girls uh, or boys, um, where you could get a subscription for, say, earrings. And every single month for a nominal fee, I think it was 10 bucks or 20 bucks, you got four pairs of earrings. And any you didn't like, you posted back. So you can do a subscription model with your products as well. I thought that was a really cool idea, that one. And that had actually, I met the venture capital company that had funded that company quite a lot of money because they thought it was pretty cool too. You can also sell online ebooks. So I think ebooks have done a few revolutions in terms of being product online. Um, they all came out, they're a big hullabaloo in the early 2000s. Everyone was like, this is the next big thing. Everyone's going to read books online. But I think in that case, um, the trend kind of superseded the technology. Back then, we didn't have Kindles, we didn't have iPads. And I guess people were kind of, their mindsets were, hadn't got around to going, you know what, it's actually really convenient to take a tablet, then five books on holiday and save on that room and baggage. So I didn't feel like they took off like everybody thought they would. These days I do think they've taken off. Um, I know certainly if I compare when I launched my first book, I've written two, self-published two books. One was in the year 2006. Ebooks weren't really a thing. I didn't have to worry about that. It was just literally getting the physical copy done and shipping those out. It's another thing I've sold around the world online. Um, this time around, when I published last year my book, uh, No Kidding, Why Our Kids Know More About Technology Than Us and What We Can Do About It, uh, I had to think about the online version and I had to launch a version on Amazon and get it done in multiple formats for Kindle and um, what were some of the others, I forget all of them, Google Play and so on. So I actually ended up paying a woman who took me through that process because there were literally so many formats to work your head around and you had to get blooming uh, tax file numbers for America. So all of that stuff, she kind of helped me through and uh, that was really helpful. So look, ebooks, you can sell them or you can also make them um, what I'd call a lead capture. So people enter their details to get the free ebook. So for instance, at the moment, as a company, my company, The Creative Collective, are making a big uh, foray into crowdfunding. We've just completed our second uh, really successful crowdfunding campaign where we helped uh, so a couple out of Brisbane raise 100000 in just 30 days. And if that, on a side note, is of interest, we're running a free webinar on that next Thursday. So grab the details off our website under the training or event section. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the crowdfunding. So we're creating an ebook at the moment all about, you know, tips for crowdfunding. And the whole idea of that will be a lead generation thing. So we're not going to sell that ebook, but we're going to get people to hopefully give us their details who are interested in that topic. And then we get them on our database and then we market to them and see if they're interested in engaging us for their services. So that's something you can sell as well. Another thing you can sell is audios. So again, I've seen this do several revolutions. Started off, people going, it's a big thing, everyone's going to buy them. And you know what? Some people did. I mean, iTunes came along and completely disrupted the music industry. And before that, Napster, side note, watched a really good documentary on that recently called Downloaded. And uh, it really was a revolutionary company, Napster, if you look at it from the online world perspective. These guys were well ahead of their time and kind of young guys in California goofing off to a large degree. Um, so check it out if you're interested in early internet days and, and documentaries and stories about that. Look, these days, um, I have seen clients successfully sell audios. Uh, we worked with a client who uh, had content in audio format of a religious nature. And though they were only $1 and $2 and so on a download, they certainly got a fair bit of volume for those. So that's something you could do. I also have uh, a lot of DJ friends. So one recently moved from Australia to San Diego. He's releasing music. Um, he's uploaded it onto certain DJ platforms where people are paying $1.29 to download it. It's not iTunes, but it's something like it. And if you want to explore with that stuff as well, SoundCloud is a online portal where you can launch music um, or any kind of sound effect. I've uploaded interviews of me doing radio pieces and um, 
you can embed that into your website. So for instance, we've got a client who's a radio show and to um, she speaks really well and she's more likely to do a presentation or go on the radio than she is to say write a blog. So I've said to her, no worries, let's get all those recordings of your video content onto your website. So we've been uploading those to SoundCloud and we'll start embedding them in there. Another thing I have sold and continue to sell online is domain names. So we became a reseller of a company called TPP Internet back in 2008 or something like that. They offer the opportunity for us to what's called white label and that's where you sort of embed their system onto your page. So if you go onto the domains page of our website, the actual transaction is taking place through the company TPP. Uh, but it's all branded as us. And there's numerous sort of systems like that where you can sell stuff online. You don't have to have the system. You don't have to have the product. You just have to be clever enough to know that's possible. So, hey, that's a possibility too. And although that is not a very big revenue stream for the Creative Collective, it certainly is a revenue stream. And our clients really love it from a convenience point of view, being able to buy the domain from us, do the website with us, do the marketing and not have to shop around. And just knowing that there's that one place they can go to to ask questions or when they have a drama, they know who to talk to. So you can also sell other people's stuff, which is basically called affiliating. Now, historically in the Get Up Speed program, we did do a module on affiliating, but uh, we deemed that local SEO was probably more of interest and more relevant to more of the small business owners and startups we were seeing coming through doing that program. So we are going to make that affiliate uh, module available as a single module to purchase on the Training Collective website. And um, we are about to do a big haul loading up a bunch of topics. I know some of you have asked about other topics where I've mentioned that that will be available soon. And they could be really good additional learning that you guys do over Christmas or something like that. But a little bit more on that, uh, just in the context of selling online. So you can do what is called drop shipping, and that's where you can go into an affiliate marketplace, say, oh, that looks like a product my market would like. So in those cases, mostly you would have a website that already has high volume, or maybe a database, or maybe a social network, maybe let's say mums, and um, you would get a product that you think mums would like, and you would embed that onto your site. And it would transact and track that that sale had come from your website. Therefore, you were owed a percentage or a dollar value. So different affiliates offer different stuff. But I can tell you, for instance, a friend of mine, Leah uh, Squire, has a company, BYO um, Kids, which is a bring your own kids on a travel kind of experience. She sells and affiliates, for instance, uh, Dream World Passes and uh, Wet n Wild and Fiji Holidays and Flight Centers and all that kind of stuff. And every time people click on that on her site, and click through and actually purchase that she gets a cut and she's actually made last I knew about $60,000 not a bad little income like you don't have to work if that's just going on on your website passively literally passively and uh, I explained this concept to a um past exchange student of ours actually and good on him he went and got all that set up and he started selling pet food online without having pet food without knowing anything about pet food he just started transacting other people's pet food and look he wasn't making big money but good on him he, he made money and uh yeah selling online can be really fun and you can even get your kids into it I guess is the moral of that story so just actually I'm curious to know uh show of hands hands up if you are already selling something online yourself Okay, Chelsea is, anybody else? And Beck is and Colin is. Okay, cool. Love you to drop me a line, uh, guys, who put your hands up of what you're selling just to get a feel for what you are doing. And while they're doing that, how many of you are thinking of selling something online? And you're keen to know Gina is, Marie is, Dalwin is. Cool. And there's starting to be some posts coming through. Okay, Beck's quick off the mark. She said tea. I actually know a bit about Beck's business because we've just gone through the branding phase and we're looking to launch the website soon. So good on her. She's chosen to work with us and we're super excited about it. I'll give it a plug, mummytea.com.au, coming soon. And you can go ahead and like her Facebook page, uh, particularly if you're a mum and you like tea or you've got mum friends who like tea. Chelsea says she sells consumables, toys, and furniture to child cares. Okay, we've spoken, haven't we, Chelsea? Really interesting business model there. So that's a good point. You don't always have to sell to consumers. You can sell on a B2B sense as well. Um, drop me your URLs as well, and I'll give them a plug just like I did for Beck if you'd like a little shout-out. It's always good for you guys to get to know each other through the course of the program and support one another and 
you know, get to know one another. We'll just see if any more come through and I'll continue in the meantime. Okay, so what could you sell? I've already started giving you some ideas. Ah, Chelsea sent me her uh, URL. Thank you for reminding me, Chelsea. I know we only spoke not long ago. Uh, her one is supplyeyes.com.au, and it's spelled S-U-P-P-L-E-Y-E-S.com.au. So you might like to have a look at that if you are interested in uh, the stuff she sells to child cares predominantly. Okay, some other ideas if you're thinking about selling. One, I've said products which you stock. Now, be aware of this because I got all excited about selling my t-shirts, but I didn't really think it through, and I guess you can't even imagine it until you've lived it, how much room stock actually takes up in your blooming house. So these were only t-shirts, you know, they're not a big item, and I got really organized and I had the spare wardrobe because the kids were babies and they didn't take up much space in the wardrobe. And I got those hang down things that have all the drawers kind of thing. But it wasn't long before the whole wardrobe was full. And then I started having boxes in the um, garage. And then I started having other deliveries coming. And I was kind of like, oh, my God, there's just stuff everywhere. So um, for that reason, drop shipping is really good. Unless you really do have a big house, you really do have the room, and you're really happy to stock it and handle it. And even that takes time. You know, you've got to unpack the order that comes in, put it in a logical place for easy retrieval, keep a handle on your inventory so you know what you've got there you've got to get really organized and get some good systems in place if you're going to sell online and if you're going to do any volume which is obviously where you start to make the money and you know what it's really good to have that approach as well that even if you are going to touch and feel and do the stuff yourself at the start um, you want to proceduralize it systemize it so that you're as efficient as you can be and you can then pass it on to someone else to do because it's a no-brainer in terms of how you would go about it so I literally proceduralized you know, when I sold the t-shirt business, uh, t-shirt sale was made, print out the packing slip, uh, get an envelope this kind of size available from these shops, uh, slip it into one of these clear files, stick it with a Tukanga Tees t um, sticker, post it into the envelope, should cost you about this much. So, you know, anybody could do it. There were step-by-step -step instructions. Um, the next one you could sell is the products via dropshipping. We've talked about that. The membership uh, subscriptions could be a one-off fee, a monthly fee, an annual fee. Now, I'm always amazed at, you know, things like gyms and uh, what else has sort of memberships. There's lots of places that do have memberships. Uh, I guess even child cares is kind of a regular fee um, that don't offer this online and you have to fill in paperwork and they direct debit and all this kind of stuff. Personally, I would love to be able to go on and administrate my own gym membership and cancel it and restart it and buy the annual when they do a special and all that kind of stuff. So I just think more businesses should do this. Um, hands up how many of you are um, – Actually, I'll just recover this. Gina's saying, what is dropshipping? So dropshipping is what I covered on the last slide, Gina, which is why I sort of skipped over it on this one. To remind you, um, dropshipping is when you don't stock the items and you get someone else to ship that item when you make that sale. So they do charge a fee to do that. So, for instance, Zoe and our team is doing a lot of online sales through Amazon right now. And you might know Amazon as a place that sells books, but they've grown a lot. They now sell pretty much everything. And in places like the UK and America, people buy most of their stuff from Amazon. I mean, they need an iPad, buy it on Amazon. I need a new shaver, buy it on Amazon. I need a new book, buy it on Amazon. And they offer the most crazy terms, like it's delivered the next day, free shipping, free returns, all this sort of stuff. Anyway, Zoe is uh, doing uh, Amazon selling, and she's literally buying stuff in Australia and then shipping them to other countries where there's a demand. So last week, her story was about Furbies, you know, the toy uh, kind of got these big bulgy eyes, kind of like a little fluffy bird thing. Anyway, they retail something like 90 or 100 bucks, and she found a place here in Australia that was selling them at 30 so she bought a whole lot, and she is literally selling them on Amazon. Now, she has got them in her house and she stocks them, but she does have the option to get them drop shipped by the company. So she could ship them all to Amazon and then she would just tell them order, 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 and they would do all of that. And they would charge about 30% to do that if she wanted it. So she'd do less work, but she'd get less profit. So I guess you've got to just weigh that up. Um, so I hope that explains drop shipping, Gina, for you. Um, look, another thing you can sell online is donations. Hands up how many of you might be involved in, say, a not-for-profit or uh, some kind of charity or something that really could do with some donations that would help their 
organization out a lot. Karen, Jennifer, Delwyn. Okay, good one. Good on you, charitable people. Everybody's hand should be up. I know you're all busy, but uh, if everybody does a little, it can help an awful lot. I've worked with a few charities and not-for-profits. As a company, we always pick one per year and kind of put all our attention and focus on them. I've worked with uh, them where they kind of have like a downloadable form and you have to fill it in and say, I would like to be a friend of, you know, the organization. I would like to make one-off pledge of. Well, that's very nice, but some poor person has to do the admin on that and re-enter it and transact the credit card and send them a receipt and thank you very much. And it's a one-off payment. You've got no show of getting a recurring in that case. I'd much rather, again, transact it online, set it to recurring, set some automated follow-ups that say, hey, your friend of whatever not-for-profit is about to expire, would you like to renew? And hopefully they will. Maybe they'll even overlook that email and you just deduct them at that time. So with donations, uh, PayPal has a really great button to do that. Uh, interestingly, I was talking to Facebook yesterday and on their calls to action on Facebook pages, which you'll learn more about through Zoe, uh, you can have a book now, you can have a learn more, and now you can have a donate now, which is kind of cool as well. So you can do that online too. Um, you could sell online tickets to events or functions as well, couldn't you? So the Training Collective certainly sells tickets uh, to events. We run workshops all over Australia, as you know, um, and sometimes we do other functions. So we might do a webinar or like last the week before last, we did an event with Google. So that's something you could do. Um, you could also make venue or facilities bookings. So we have a boardroom. We do rent it out. And you can go onto our website and you can request to book it. Um, we don't get enough volume and it's only one boardroom. But if we had multiple rooms, it would make a lot of sense for us to have an online booking engine for that on our website as well. Obviously, um, you can order and purchase services and products. So on the services front, again, I would love to be able to go online and book a massage. I would love to see my local masseuse has an opening on Monday at 7 o'clock and just go, yep, I'll take that space, thanks. I'd be more than happy to give my credit card and lock that in. Now, that does take a bit of organization from the service provider's part. They've got to keep their calendar up to date. But um, wouldn't it be awesome? Because I know a lot of people who work in that space that moan and say, oh, I've got all these bookings, but people don't turn up, and it's really hard to enforce the cancellation policy. And I get it. So why don't you do that? And then, you will. yes, you might share a percentage of the booking with the online booking system, but you might get more volume because you've opened up your accessibility. I mean, I know I really struggle to get a call out you know, during the day to someone to say, hey, I'd like to book your massage. Every day I'm like, I'm going to book a massage. I'm going to book a massage. And a week and a month goes by and I haven't booked the blooming massage. So I wish they'd make it easier for me. Similarly, I'd love to be able to book a tradie to come and give me a quote. You can't do that on many sites. And, you know, it's 2015. This technology has been there a long time. It doesn't cost a lot. It's not that hard to put in place. I don't know why more people don't do it. Um, and we've kind of talked about the other two, so let's move on. Okay, in terms of selling online and how the actual transaction works, let me take you through that. So there is a computer and there is a customer and they go onto your website, your e-commerce enabled website. What actually happens behind the scenes? How does this thing work? Well, it, the website interacts with a web server, right, which is where your are uh, uh, host or your website is stored so if you think of the host or domain name let's say the creative collective.com.au is stored on a host server that is our hosting so if you pay 30 bucks 50 bucks 60 bucks a month to host your website that's saying keep all my files on a server right but that server doesn't have the ability to transact uh, you don't want your details being recorded on a server because someone could hack the server and grab your credit card. So what we do is we transact at step two right here through what's called a gateway, which does what's called encrypting the data. Now, imagine on the screen right now is like the matrix, lots of binary code, lots of numbers all changing. And somewhere in those numbers are your credit card details but the encryption is that they're putting lots of stuff. So if people try and hack that, they can't. They don't know which numbers it is that are actually transacting. So a gateway could be something like a thing called eway.com.au. I'll drop you that. 
Uh, that's one of the more popular ones in Australia. I think it's the biggest one. And as to what one you go with, <clears throat> it really depends where your bank is, how much volume, what you want that uh, to feed in with. For instance, an account system, does it need to do inventory and so on. Uh, but eWay is a really common one that we often recommend to people and that we actually use ourselves. Now, once it's encrypted, it actually interacts with the bank. So that money... Um, you need to have a what's called an online merchant facility. So some people go, oh, yeah, I've got one of those because they've got the um, FPOS system. Well, that is actually different to the website system. It shouldn't be, and in some cases some banks are getting with the program now and it's not, but in some cases it's very different. What the bank does and the way it views it is that you um, – Yes, you can have your little FPOS machine and you can go and sell your stuff at the markets, for instance. But the moment you take it online into the world, it deems it high risk, funnily enough, because, you know, I guess uh, somebody in Nigeria, Indonesia, Russia, anywhere in the world could hack your website. Therefore, it's harder for them to do that than it is with an FPOS machine. So I've literally been turned down on some occasions with initial applications saying you're high risk, we wouldn't do it. And I've had to argue the fact and then prove that we have have got all these measures in place like a gateway and returns policy and terms and conditions and blah 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 blah. So anyway, um some of the banks I will say oops are better than others. Um St. George I've found a very good to work with if you don't have much of a track record with merchants, like say you're a brand new customer. You can be really loyal and go to your usual bank of who you use for business or home, Commonwealth, Westpac, whoever it may be. Um, just be careful because I've had some clients go, oh, I went with Commonwealth because, you know, they um, I have my bank loan through them and my house loan and I do all my banking with them. And then the person thinks they're being helpful at Commonwealth Bank and goes, yeah, you can buy our package. We've got the encryption and all of that in the one go. But sometimes that, that yeah, that's all in the one thing. That's great. Doesn't work with your website. So they come to us going, I've oh, purchased this and I talk to the nice lady and we go, it doesn't work with your website though. So I would do all of this in consultation with the team who are building your website if you're building the e-commerce function in. And then finally, what happens is um, the money comes out of the consumer's bank, the person purchasing the thing from your website, and deposits into your bank. Happy days. That's when uh, you're talking. And um, depending on how it works, I know with eWay, they basically deposit a lump sum in each day and then from an accounts perspective we have to go through and work out what that was made up of ah that was one gut sale one byo sale one module sale etc etc now all of this might sound quite uh elaborate and it kind of is because it's a lot of stuff going on and i can tell you right now if you need to have an e-commerce website a gateway and a uh, online merchant facility, all up, these things will cost you often, not always, a setup fee, a monthly fee, and a transactional fee. So for everything you sell, they're going to take a percentage. Every month you have it, whether you sell anything or not, they're going to charge you a fee. And aren't they nice? They'll charge you for a setup as well. Now, occasionally, people like eWay do a special, and they'll waive the setup fee. They're good ones to jump on. But as a general sense, that is one option, and I wouldn't normally recommend this model for e-commerce if you are a new business, if you're selling a low-cost item like, say, a candle or soap or something like that. You know, they're 10 bucks and under. There's not a lot of margin in it. You don't want to be paying around with all of these fees 100 bucks a month, and you don't even know if this business is going to make money. You don't know if you're going to sell 100 candles or one or none. If that's the case, I would be recommending you start with a thing called PayPal. Um, hands up those of you who do use PayPal from as a consumer. You, you transact, you use that. Sure, so there's hands up everywhere. People are pretty comfortable with PayPal these days. So what PayPal does out of all these different processes I've just outlined with e-commerce is it combines it all into one. So what happens is you still have the e-commerce website. Instead of transacting through a gateway and through an online facility and all this mumbo jumbo literally you have paypal and the cool thing is you don't pay a fee to set up paypal apart from what you might pay to a web developer once to get it set up for you you don't pay a monthly fee with paypal awesome if you make no sales you knock down any money all you do is pay a transactional fee so that's good you're only spending if you're making if you know what i mean 
And yes, it is slightly higher than a bank uh, transactional fee, but you don't have the other fees, so it all works out better. So I'd recommend starting with PayPal for most of you, and then only when you're doing the volume do you switch to eWay. So that's exactly what the Creative Collective did and the Training Collective. We started off with PayPal, and then we would keep monitoring it each month, going, what are we paying in PayPal fees this month? What are we paying that month? Ah, oh, they're pretty high now. Let's compare if we went to eWay if it's going to save us some money. Ah, oh, it will. Let's go back to that. And that's what we did. So um, I hope that's cleared things up. Is that makes sense to you guys in terms of your options with e-commerce systems and how the whole thing works in the back end? Hands up if you've learned a few things through that slide and that's kind of helpful. Awesome. Hands are going up. That's what we like to see. Okay. Moving on then, so you've decided on PayPal or uh, Gateway or whatever system you're going to use, you also need to get super clear on what you want your shopping cart to do. So let's say you are sitting there going, I want e-commerce on my website, yes. Uh, you then need to think about what do you want it to do. Just like I've challenged you or Kat did rather last week on a website to come up with a shopping list of what do you want your website to do. I guess this is potentially going to make the list a bit longer. We're now thinking about shopping cart functionality. And once again, like Kat mentioned last week, um, you can make a list of the stuff. Like if you're going to buy a house, you may not get all of it. But if you get most of it, you should be a happy camper. So do you want gift certificates? Write that down if you do. Do you want the ability to product search? Do you want them to sign up to your newsletter when they purchase a product or have the ability to? Do you want to be able to run sales reports and what do those reports look like? Do you want to do currency conversion, accept money in different currencies? Do you want a wish list? So maybe if you're selling, you know, wedding registry things or gifty things, that would be great because people can say, I want that for my birthday and other people can come back in and grab it for them. Inventory control. Is the website going to be where you keep your inventory or do you keep that in an account system or something different? I would really strongly encourage you to give that some thought. You really do want that ideally to integrate with whatever you're doing in the offline world so that you don't take an order online and then go, oh, sorry, I can't ship you it because we've run out. That would look really bad. Think about what categories and, and the ability to do categories. Like are you going to have a category for, say, women's, men's, boys, girls? Are you going to have one for new and on sale? And uh, these are common categories, red, blue, I don't know. You can categorize stuff whichever way you want, but probably look at other websites to get a bit of an idea. Image display. Um, for some people, showcasing the product on e-commerce is more important than others. Um, I know even simple stuff like Gumtree, when I go to buy something, if I can't see a picture of the chair I'm about to buy or whatever, it's a big put off really. Like, is it in good condition, bad condition, is it the right color, all that kind of stuff. And um, when it comes to buying clothing, people really want to zoom in on that and see the texture, they want to see the back, they want to see the front, and so on. I'll tell you a site I really like for this very reason. Uh, this is actually a New Zealand uh, retail clothing shop that I really like. Uh, it's just your basics. It's not an expensive high-end brand. I guess it's kind of a bit like, it's not best and less, Target, kind of. Anyway, um, if you go on their website, what they do really well is actually have a mini video of someone walking down the catwalk doing a spin. So you can actually see how the clothes hang as well as look on the image and then her doing a spin so you see the back and all that kind of stuff. So it's like being at the live catwalk. It's kind of cool. Um, shipping calculations. A lot of people come to us. They've thought about the product, where they're going to get it from, how much it's going to cost. They haven't even done the shipping calculation. And it's pretty important you do, guys, because that can kill you by the time you actually ship it. Uh, Australian shipping is really expensive. Uh, it's way more than you thought. I remember going and working all this out for my books and then going, oh my God, I have to charge like an extra $10, $15 and the book's only 20 or 20, you know, 25 or 30 or whatever. I'm so embarrassed to charge that, but I had to because I had to cover my costs, not only for the bag, but the post and the person taking it to the post. So think about all that stuff because it does take time and money. Um, affiliate management. Again, if you want to know more about affiliates, we cover it in a separate module, but 
some systems, uh, e-commerce systems, will allow you to say, to basically, what's the word, enlist a team of affiliates and say, you, you and you, you can sell on my behalf, I'll give you 10% of every sale and we'll track it through my very clever e-commerce system which happens to have affiliate management built into it. So that is possible. Do you want the ability to run discounts on certain products or certain categories or site-wide? special offers as well. Uh, do you want the ability to upsell and cross-sell? So that's when you check out, you go, you bought the tennis rackets, would you like the tennis balls with this order? That is very effective. You can make huge amounts of extra money just by having that function. So where possible, have it. Order responders. Do you want people to receive a message when they've purchased to say thanks, it's being shipped. If you have any dramas and don't get it in 10 days, contact us. And then maybe another one in 10 days saying, hey, you should have received it by now. We've done little techniques like that and God, the customers love it. And they literally, if you write it really well, write back going, yes, I did get the teddy bear. Little Johnny really likes it. Thank you so much. Because they don't realize the computer sent it and that it's just all auto-generated. Very cute. And finally, um, do you want to be able to do digital goods de delivery? So maybe you're not going to ship them the, the little teddy bear, but you're going to let them download the ebook or the audio once. Um, so does the shopping cart have to have that function? So look, there's actually more than that, but that hopefully gives you some ideas of some of the functions that you could look at. Uh, Chelsea said, how is the best way to tackle shipping calculations? I'm not sure how to start. Yeah, it can be a big one, shipping calculations, Chelsea. Um, Really depends what you sell, and I know your products, but I imagine you've got everything from big to small to, you know, large and heavy and, and light. Um, the different options are usually uh, flat rate, so you work out across the board it's going to be this. In America, it's very common to do free shipping, so you've got to work out whether maybe you have to add a bit on your products and then say free shipping across the board, or whether by doing free shipping, you'll get more volume. And even though that cuts into your margins a bit, if you get more volume, if it balances out, if you know what I mean. Um, another option is weight-based. So you'd then enter the weight for every single product on your system. So that's 85 grams, that's 2 kilos, that's 100 kilos. And uh, you would then make it do a calculation with it. Um, some really clever systems actually will talk to FedEx, um, to DHL, to Ozpost. That's getting pretty tricky, but kind of good as well if you don't get caught short, if you know what I mean. And the system with all that forethought takes care of it. So it, um, let's say Ozpost puts their prices up and you weren't aware. If it's interacting with the system, it's going to display that. So I hope that gives you a few ideas, Chelsea. Um, Colin says, Sendle, S-E-N-D-L-E, -E, is doing some reasonable and flat rate shipping. So that would be worth taking a look at. I'm presuming Sendle, Colin, is one of these, I uh, guess, competitors to Ozpost, which I saw another one driving around the other day, and I thought, good on them having a crack. Uh, their sort of mantra was delivering at to hard to find places at a cheaper rate or something like that. And I guess people do need that. Chelsea said thanks. So hopefully she's, yeah, all sorted. Okay, so we talked about web design, um, web systems last week. And then you've got a kind of chunk in the shopping cart selection too. So last week you might have been sitting there going, yep, yep, got it. I'm going to go with WordPress or yep, yep, got it. I'm going to go with Business Catalyst or something else. And again, if you do need to make a decision about your website refresh or new one or now you start to have doubts about whether your current site is suitable and that you might actually need a new site, I guess to this week's discussion could also be helpful. So basically, um, on these systems over here on the left, on WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla, which you'll remember from last week are all open source CMS or open source content management systems. They're all really popular. You can get a module or actually they're called plugins in many cases. So for instance, on WordPress, um, a shopping cart system that we often use on that is called WooCommerce. We've used it a lot of times. It has a lot of that functionality I've outlined. It's not too difficult to put it on, so we don't have to charge too much. Uh, so that's an option. And Drupal and Joomla have similar. You get that system and then you tack on the shopping cart experience. Uh, not only that, with WooCommerce, there's other plugins you can add to get some of that functionality. So if WooCommerce, and I can't remember if it does or doesn't, but for instance, if it doesn't have wishlist, you might add another plugin to have wishlist. The only thing is you've got to have a really good developer and sometimes um, plugins look good, seem like they'll be great, 
they don't always work out like you thought. So they can be a bit of trial and error. In that middle column, these are also content management systems. And in these cases, you wouldn't go with WordPress or Drupal or Joomla, but you'd specifically go and seek out one of these open source systems like Magneto. There's another one called Neto, the end part, OS, Commerce, Zencart. In that case, you'd build the website it would be very e-commerce focused on one of those systems. And I can tell you that Magneto, for instance, does come up in the industry. Some big, you know, shopping carts are built on that. I mean, really big, like lots of products. Um, pros and cons with all of these as always. And then the right hand side, there's also these purchase outright or pay monthly type scenarios. So one that's gained a lot of momentum in more recent years is called Shopify. So if you go on their website, they've got some lovely looking templates and you can um, you know, pick a template, uh, they're all around e-commerce, they're socially integrated. The only thing is they're hosted CMSs, so you have to use their hosting and you have to uh, work with them. Now, Shopify, last I knew, but I should probably double check this, um, but or, or do encourage you to do your own due diligence, Shopify's SEO and uh, analytics tracking were not as good as they could be last I checked. So for that reason, we haven't gone there in a big way. We've done some of those sites for some people. We're probably more fans of WordPress. And in our case, Business Catalyst actually has a built-in e-commerce system. And we've touched Magneto a little bit. But I'm not saying the others are bad. It's just that we don't necessarily deal with them. As I've explained before, it's like saying, uh, I'm a Lexus mechanic. You've got a BMW. doesn't mean the BMW is a bad car. just means I deal in Lexuses. So that's kind of how this thing works. But I would say can be good to work with a system like a BMW or a Lexus that there's a lot of mechanics out there, if you know what I mean. Like, for instance, uh, OS Commerce and Zencart, not that many developers out there that I know that work in those systems. Therefore, you might start off with a wonderful developer. Things going to be great. We're going to build the world's most amazing e-commerce website. And then for whatever reason, they go away. They have a divorce. They just turn shit to work with and you're stuck trying to find another person who will work with that. So just be aware of that. And look, one shopping cart and last on you, A Shop, you actually pay them monthly. So they're like uh, a third party system. You can use them on any website really and you integrate them into it. So hope that gives you some suggestions. Um, Colin Gordon says, any opinion on big commerce? Is it SEO friendly? Uh, big commerce has come on our radar the odd occasion, not very often though, Colin. And is it SEO friendly? I'm not sure. I'd have to get a team member to get under the hood and have a look. But look, in the future lessons, you guys are going to learn a bunch of stuff about SEO. So you'll probably be even able to answer that question yourself after the next couple of weeks. Um, you need to be able to put Google Analytics on it. And not only that, e-commerce tracking. And you need to track conversions uh, they're the key things and you need to be able to optimize per page and you don't want the system to create pages that are like slash 4216. You want to be able to customize the URLs, add metadata and all that kind of stuff. So if it can do all that, chances are it is SEO friendly. All of those words I've just said will make way more sense next week if they didn't make any just now. Um, look, I touched on before the fact that some systems can integrate with inventory and even your uh, account systems. Now, if you're running a really high volume inventory, uh, a lot of stock kind of business, this really is something you should look at. <clears throat> and even if you just want to get good set up from the start, uh, more cost could save you more time, though give you a scenario. Uh, we were working with a woman who actually did this program a while back. Uh, she's in Townsville. She has a children and babies wear shop and she had a website, but it wasn't really doing the sales she thought it could. And look, she's in Townsville and you know, that's great. And she had a really good name and really good clientele there, but Townsville is only one small regional center. When you consider that by getting e-commerce website, she can sell to the world. So, um, she went ahead and she got a website, not with us, and then she realized, oh my gosh, I've got to update the website constantly, I don't really have time, the stock's changing all the time, new stuff coming in, stuff selling in the shop, how am I going to get it updated on the website? So she realized then that she really needed an inventory system. So she went out and actually got one called Vend, which I didn't mention there, V-E-N-D, which um, is also really good for inventory, makes a nice website. Templates weren't that amazing, but it made it one for her. Um, 
but it turns out we can't do the Google tracking on it. And she's pretty horrified, and she's hit the Venn team up, and they're talking about implementing it, but it's kind of a big downer. So she's got a couple of things on the shopping list. You know, she got the inventory management, plugs into her accounts, tick, tick, works with her point of sale system, so when she sells in the shop, it updates on the website, tick, tick, tick. Unfortunately, we can't track the, the Facebook ads we're driving and everything else back to it. We can't track whether it's working or not. So that's a bit of a bugger, which she didn't foresee and neither did we being new to Vend. Anyway, um, here's another system. It's called SASU, S-A-A-S-U. And uh, Zero does this to a degree too. Uh, you can integrate this through what do they call it one sas one s a a s um and things like business catalyst or other systems so sometimes you'll have your website system and you'll have a bridge if you like a connector sometimes they're called an api to a system like this and what's really awesome is otherwise you will make a sale on your website it will turn up in the back of your website send you an order that's all great but somewhere at some time you're going to have to take those details and enter them into your account system to do things like your tax and your bass and if you're a small business owner struggling to market struggling to pack the sales struggling to just do the accounts then every little bit of time you can save is really crucial so again investing in this even if it's a monthly fee could be a really good idea so check it out sasu and vend is another one and even zero xero has integrations um now i don't know if you realize but you can actually sell on facebook too so you don't even have to have a website these days and even you know selling on facebook could be a really great way to test the market now, I do have to say that when this came out, it was probably more exciting than it is now. I feel like it's gone a few steps backwards. Um, but check out a radium or pavement, uh, and all you need is a PayPal account. So, you know, you can see an example here that's the old view of them having a bit of a store on Facebook. Let's just click on over actually to the live view, and uh, I'm going to check out a radium now and see what it's doing. It's a Brisbane-based company, actually, and I interviewed the guy from uh, who created it um, a few years ago. So here we are, 14,000 people like it now. Good on them. They're really stealth, no address, no phone. Good one. Uh, and you can do a free trial or a demonstration or get help. Let's have a look at their demo. So it's quick and easy still, free website, PayPal, unlimited support. Nice. when it loads okay so here's a demo so this could be your online shop on Facebook I sell bruschetta snails mmm le escargot meals and so on so let's say I want to order a pizza I'm not actually going to order it but I want one please and I could buy now or I could share it so you know kind of cool um, last I knew there were about 20 bucks a month for this. I haven't checked it out for ages, so I don't know where they got up to with this, but you could try it. Uh, then there's pavement last I knew, uh, Equid bought it out. That's right. So I'll send you this link because that's different to what I told you. 82,000 like that one, Equid demo store. Who here's a bit excited about this one and thinks they might try one of these out. Could be good. No, not for you. No one's putting their hands up. But good to know they're there, right? And tell other people. I think these stores are a really cool idea for um, kids to try. You know when your kids go, I want to do a lemonade stand. And you're like, yeah, great. I'm going to stand outside with you doing this lemonade thing. Um, or I want to do markets at the store. That's nice. How about a Facebook shop? I would be suggesting that as well. So there we go. You can sell toys, downloadables, and so on. That's pretty cool. Okay. Moving over. My um, chat would not be complete without a mention of eBay stores. Now, I am by no means the eBay expert, but there are people out there who do. Uh, there's Daryl and I forgot the second name out of Gold Coast, and they do a lot of uh, presentations about selling on eBay. Um, they do update. They look a lot better than these images now. Um, you are up against a very global market, quite competitive, could be a good way to test a market or shift stock. 
I did uh, hang out with a mate of mine in San Francisco. He's a lawyer and he earns plenty by day, but just because he's ever the entrepreneur, him and his wife decided to, at night, sell electronics online. They got really, really good at eBay stores and were doing a rip-roaring trade there for a while until they actually broke some of eBay's rules and got shut down. Uh, he is a really reputable guy. He was just kind of living on the edge, I guess. Um, but that's about all I can tell you about eBay stores. I'm not an expert, but they do exist and you could look into them if you wanted to sell stuff as well. So now I'm going to really embarrass myself and show you some examples of uh, e-commerce sites. Um, this was my very first one, my book, uh, which was my, about my grandfather's life. And I just wanted to show you how it still works. It's not pretty. Uh, what I have here is a PayPal button. So I've logged into my PayPal account. I've followed some tutorials and I've created some code, which I deposited into the back of my website, which turned up with a buy now button. And I pre-programmed it so that it says, if you want to buy it in the US, buy it for 25 US and $12 US shipping. And I pre-worked out what the book would cost to ship to each of those uh, locations. And uh, that's how you do it. Um, I'll show you a couple of other examples because we're on it. I think we showed you um, Villa Verde last week being an e-commerce website. This is one of our more recent ones that's gone live. This is a WordPress site. It actually uses um, a theme called Flatsim, which I discovered today doesn't use WooCommerce. It's got its own pre-built one, so it's a little bit different. But look, it looks pretty nice, and all of this stuff actually came with a the theme. So the ability to search and add to your basket. Um, we came up with the categories, or rather the client did, so we did it by women and interior and organic and sale and new arrivals. Um, you know, they all have a nice picture. You can log into those. Uh, we had gifts and we actually made some little gift vouchers up so that people can buy gift vouchers as well. Gifts for her, gifts for him. Here's my gift vouchers. There they are. So these images we just whipped up for them. And you can uh, click on this and choose which uh, amount you want to buy. So we've got a returns policy and some shipping info. Um, it's just a good little site. Um, and it's e-commerce and fully en enabled. And they just went with PayPal for that particular um, site. Uh, another one, I think Kat might have showed you this one last week. This is uh, clothing. Also went live not long ago. Also on WordPress. I do believe this one is WooCommerce. Um, so this is Wanderlust Style. Should have loaded these up for you first. They can take a little bit if they're not loaded. So this is a nice feature, getting uh, the details straight away. Um, you know, just organized a little bit differently. Chop, sale, etc. So there we go. There's a couple of examples of e-commerce websites there. All right. Moving on. The steps to actually setting up e-commerce on your website. Number one, decide on the shopping cart you will use. And as I've explained, that will somewhat depend on what website you're going to have or already do have and what functions you want it to have. Once you've got all that in mind, you integrate or create or customize the database, um, meaning ignore the database, but you just integrate it with the system. And you make sure that you've got the ability to take credit cards. Um, one common myth I'm going to dispel right now is that if you do PayPal, you can't take credit cards. That is not true. There is the ability for people to choose to pay by credit card or by PayPal. And you'll actually find that a hell of a lot of people these days have PayPal and will opt for that option. But if they don't want to, they want to pay not with their PayPal money, but with their credit card, they can do that too. So it's pretty easy. It just depends which method of integration you use from PayPal. I know in a recent job, um, the client rang up PayPal. They got told about some new whiz -bang PayPal product, came back to us with that. And then when they did it, they didn't have the option to take a credit card. And that was because the PayPal team had advised them wrong. And we reverted it back to the old version of PayPal and everything was hunky-dory, just as I explained. 
Um, next up, get a payment gateway or security certificate or just use PayPal, or there's also Google Checkout, very similar to PayPal, just never gained as much, I guess, momentum and traction as PayPal. Then you integrate it. Now, the next bullet point is really, really important, and I can't believe how many people I've met don't do it. And then they go, I haven't made any sales on my website, and I go through and I do a transaction. I go, doesn't work. It hasn't been tested. Um, so that's pretty important. And only if it has been tested do you start to tell people. So they're the few steps of setting up e-commerce. Now, if some of you are sitting there going, this has all been great tonight, but I'm actually already selling and I actually want a bit more than that, don't worry, I've got something for you too. When you get further down the line and you actually are selling, the game changes from getting up and running and selling and marketing and getting, you know, sales and inquiries to actually getting more people transacting that have got to the shopping cart stage. Now, you're always going to have some level of what we call shopping cart abandonment. That would literally be like going around a supermarket, filling a trolley, and then leaving the trolley at the counter. Not ideal because the poor supermarket people have to put it all away again. Fortunately for you, on the online scenario, you don't have to put it all away, but you just missed out on a whole trolley full, potentially, of sales. And you want to really understand why didn't you continue with the purchase? So, um, I think one thing that's really important is to always offer the option to call or contact you. As you saw on the Iradium uh, Stealth Style Facebook, they don't offer that option. There's a website, there's no email, there's no phone. So straight away, had I not told you, these guys are Brisbane, these guys are legit, I met them. You might have been going, is this in Brisbane? I don't know if this is any good. I don't know if I feel safe here. People want to be able to feel like they can contact you. However, I get you might have children, you might have other commitments, this might be... <clears throat> something you've done on the side I'm just gonna have a drink of water one moment and you just might not have the capacity for them to call you so think about that but maybe leave an email at the least uh, make the most of cross and upsell add third-party reinforcement messages what that means is like these signs on the right hand side the little PayPal and the verify and secured those little things people may or may not actually take them in but there's psychology going on in the sales process where they're like, this looks like a secure site. I am happy to put my credit card over the line. So you can't use these if you don't offer them. Like if you don't offer PayPal, you can't use that icon. And if you don't have VeriSign secured, you can't use that either. But uh, you really want to think about what are the best practice things like these to implement um, to make people feel comfortable to go, oh, yeah, I, I'm happy to transact here. Um, also handle coupon codes with care. I know we had an issue on Awards Hub recently where we were doing promotion, we had a code, there was some breakdown in communication between the uh, person who created the code and the person who was advertising the code and there were people left, right and centre like couldn't transact it so that kind of fell down a little bit. Um, you might want to provide multiple payment options. You might want to say pay by PayPal or by credit card or by direct deposit or by different currencies um, because the more options you give them the more chances you have of hitting the option that they'd most like to do also reassure customers at the right time and place so you know make sure shipping costs return policies testimonials they're all there as they step through the shopping process and if you can afford free shipping offer it and then track your mistakes Maybe use an exit survey. Just like that thing popped up when we went on Wanderlust style. Uh, if people are clicking off and not continuing with the sale on the shopping cart, there are some systems that will say, hey, let us know why you're not continuing. Was it too expensive? Not what you're looking for? You know, someone came to the door. So you can have a bit of fun with it as well. But really, really valuable to get that feedback. Now, I feel like I'm running out of time, and I do want to make sure I've got time for questions. What time are we at? Yeah, it's 8.30 already. Um, there is a whole section in Google Analytics dedicated to e-commerce as well. So you need to enable that. Apart from what I taught you in the earlier weeks about getting the code for Google Analytics on your website, I would actually recommend for the e-commerce side getting a trained professional to do this for you. Uh, it is a little bit technical, but once you've got it integrated, no matter how bad or how good your sales reports are, on your e-commerce system on your website, this can actually run a report and tell you what's happening. So as you can see in this example, it's a bit grainy. Um, 
they sold two products which generated $757. Great, you know, you could print this out, take it to the team meeting and everyone knows what's happening with the online company. They had 8.57% conversion rate. So of those who went on the site, 8.57 actually converted and purchased. Uh, three transactions, uh, four purchase products and the average order value was 252. So it does all those tally ups for you. How you do this is you need to put the e-commerce code on the uh, thank you page for the e-commerce product. Some sites are easier to do than others. Again, I'd get a professional to do it. I wouldn't even attempt it myself because it's too fiddly. Um, here's a stat that might be helpful. Of all the people you get on your website, you can probably expect 1% to 2% to actually transact. So if you get 100 people on your site, one or two might buy. So you can start to see how with the online business model, it is a numbers game. You need a lot of traffic coming from a lot of sources so that 1% to 2% of that traffic will transact. And then in terms of forecasting how much money you'll make and whether you'll be able to make that back in terms of your expenses or setup costs, work backwards. So um, I need to make, let's say, $100,000 a year to from my online business. Uh, that would mean selling this many products. If you want to sell that many products, I'm going to have, and that's 1% to 2% of them, I'm going to have to sell times 100 of that of traffic on the site. I'm not explaining that very well. And maths isn't my number one forte, but uh, that is how you do the forecasting of what your e-commerce website might make or what its potential is. Some websites, like this one in front of us, do, do even better, 8.5%, 7%. If you are doing better, bonus, you're doing well. If you're doing worse, why is it going so badly? What can you do to improve it? And if you're getting the 1%, try and get the 1.5%, try and get the 2 Always, always, always testing and tweaking and measuring and refining and keep on going. I'm afraid to say, folks, that a website is never done. You don't do it, dust your hands and go, right, onto social media now. You keep testing and measuring it always. The website is the heartbeat. It's the pulse of your online business. Uh, more on e-commerce tracking. Like you can, yeah, collect data on where they're coming from, these, you know, who's your, you know, does, I don't know, Rockhampton really love your products, all through your Google Analytics. Um, also the time to purchase, so the day from the initial visit and the total number of visits, they came back, they came back, they kept looking at the red dress, they finally bought the red dress, is all there. Um, I'll grab this little, I can't grab this link unless I exit for you. I'll get it from down here. Ah. Have a look at that one, which explains that stuff a little bit better. Okay. And finally, don't underestimate the follow-up. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned Kinder Music before or not. I don't think so. But uh, it's a, the world's largest online movement and music program for children aged 0 to 7. We worked with them for a long time, and uh, they were selling their musical products and uh, packs online and stuff, and we set up a series that if they bought one instrument, it would follow up with a series more, and that really drove sales up a, a lot, and, and that really helped build the, their business. So it's not only, uh, my point is about the sale, it's about what you do post that, and you're always better to market to people who have already purchased, because they're already warm, and hopefully they liked it, and they, they liked the experience of the company, and they deal with it again, hopefully they just need to be reminded, then it is to go out and get a brand new customer. So don't forget the importance of the follow-up and uh, keeping nurturing and in touch with your campaign as well. Okay, uh, there are questions there, so let's switch over to those. Uh, first up, I've got Chelsea saying, does Myob have integration? Chelsea, Myob, hmm, that old beast. I haven't played with Myob in the longest time. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know many companies that are on it anymore, to be honest. Um, I guess you would Google it. If, if you were asking me that question, this is what I'd do. Go to Google. I know Myob have online. Myob online inventory integrations. Integrations or add-ons is what they're normally called. Here we go. Add-on to Myob in inventory management. That looks quite promising. Good old Google. I'll copy that to you and have a little look-see 
and see if that is suitable. Oh, yep, look, integrates with Shopify. What else we got here? Magneto, Magento, WooCommerce. There's a couple of ticks, Big Commerce. There's a few we've mentioned. So, yeah, looks pretty good. Just be careful. Some of them charge. Some of them sound really good on an integration. You're like, yes, it does. Magneto, that's what I use or whatever. And then you go, oh, it only does that. That's not everything I wanted. So do check it out quite thoroughly before committing. Chelsea says, how do I know if someone has abandoned their cart? Good question. Um, look, some e-commerce systems will tell you. You can get Google Analytics telling you as well through the e-commerce function. You've got to have all that integrated in order to know. Uh, Colin asked, any opinion on big commerce e-friendly, being SEO friendly? I mentioned that earlier, Colin. Um, I don't know. Um, and I mentioned that uh, in the future weeks we'll be covering off SEO more. And once you've got that information, you'll probably be able to answer that yourself. Uh, Marie Delaney said, Facebook shops, do they have secure gateways or carts? So Marie, with Facebook shops, they use PayPal only. And remember that that three-step process that I showed in that diagram is condensed into one, PayPal. PayPal acts as the online bank, it acts as the gateway, and it acts as the e-commerce transactional place. So um, all you need is PayPal, and you're up and running with Facebook shops. Karen says, so when you use PayPal, it encrypts data specific to that transaction, uh, credit card and customer name, but what about securing customer data on your website when someone registers as a customer but doesn't actually buy? Do you need to install a security certificate to protect personal details? Is that the difference between a HTTPS and HTTP? There's a few questions within that question, Karen, so let's go through them one by one. Yes, so when you're on a website, let me go to the Creative Collective because I know it does it. Okay, I'm on the Creative Collective website. I'm in the market to buy a website training of some kind, social media training. I click on training. I go, what have these guys got on offer? I go, oh, this looks good. Social media is half day on the Sunshine Coast. Click on that. Now, watch this. This is www. Because this is about to transact and this is a secure page, yes, we have a security um, certificate. This is now turned into an S and this is actually switched over to another system. Without me pointing that out, most people wouldn't even notice that. But that does mean that when I go to transact by uh, clicking on uh, or filling in these details, putting in my credit card and submitting, it is all secure for that person to do so. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, there's a bit more to a question though. Um, so what it does when it encrypts data, it interacts with your website. So yes, the data from through PayPal deposits there. So it will go, Eva Adams bought one book and there, there's the shipping details on PayPal. And usually where it's integrated, that information also deposits on your website. So you can kind of look at either end if that makes sense. So the data is secured on the website and on PayPal. Now on the website front, then it becomes really important to, um, the visa details aren't secured there, but the customer details can be, depends how you've got it set up. It becomes really important to have the safety certificates, um, security measures like changing your passwords, strong passwords, etc. And what we're actually recommending to our clients, we went out with a communication about it today, is actually having a bunch of other plugins on which uh, can help keep your website more safe. We're not even doing pure hosting packages on WordPress anymore. It's open source. It's open to hacking. We're seeing more cases of it. So we're trying to get proactive and um, prevent that by doing these security measures because we know there is customer data and other important features on any given website. Uh, I think that answers your question. Okay, uh, Delwyn says, I've been able to follow the email links to the weekly lessons. Last two weeks have given me a what 404 error, also not able to get to the lessons via the portal. They only will let me get to the first. That is quite strange, Delwyn. Okay, I've seen a couple of messages coming through about uh, issues on the site. Always more than happy to 
answer them because it's really important to us that you are able to engage with the learning really well. So when I log in, um, I'm in the back again, guts.thetrainingcollective.com.au. Make sure you're logging in with that URL, not something else. Then course content and my course. And I can click into this week's course, Selling Online. And I can read through it. And I can, you know, click on it. And then I go to the next lesson. So I'm having an okay experience going through the different lessons. Um, hands up if anyone else is having the same trouble as has been outlined. Are you having troubles, anyone? Okay, Chelsea's got her hand up. And just Chelsea. Okay, uh, Colin has too. Okay, give me more information, guys, so we can get to the bottom of it. Uh, last two weeks on the email link. So it sounds like the Gmail, oh, sorry, the MailChimp stuff that's getting sent out doesn't have the correct link in it. I'm going to check that with Elise. My understanding was she'd gone through and checked all of those. So she's in tomorrow, and I'll get her to check those. So um, how can I get you guys to connect? Well, week four, here's the actual link. Uh, you will be prompted to log in through that. Let's see if by going to there you can log in. You can even try it now live with me and see if we can solve it. So Delwyn's getting welcome page and no further. That's not good. Um, I wonder, Delwyn, if perhaps your settings haven't been put in properly. So we might have to look at your client record in the back. Um, Chelsea says, with the affiliate selling, is all this set up on my website or is there setup required from my dropshippers side? Uh, I think you're confusing two completely different things there. Affiliates and dropshippers are, are different things. So mm, I guess that, no, they're kind of not. You can get an affiliate who will dropship for you, actually, the more I think about it. Um, yeah, it's all set up on your website. There's several ways to do it. It's kind of an in-depth topic with maybe you want to go through the affiliate module to fully understand. But in short, uh, you can go to an affiliate marketplace and grab links where you'll feature them on your website. Person purchases, they go to another website, transact, and you'll clip the ticket if you like, get a transaction. Others, they won't really realize they're going through your site, it looks like, but it's just tracking that uh, through theirs as well and then they ship the item so yeah that's it in short I hope that makes sense and need sounds like you might need that affiliate lesson, lesson as well um, Delwyn says she's going to the dashboard welcome to the portal Delwyn she clicks on week one it takes me to a page that shows a summary of each lesson I click on the first one and it takes me to a page that says you must complete your online toolbox uh, blah 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 blah. That sounds like I'm wondering, Delwyn, are you on the right URL? That sounds like the old system. Are you going in on uh, this one? Have a look at that and feedback to me if that is the place you're going in on. And Colin, same thing. If you're getting a 404, are you going in on guts? Dot the training collective dot com dot au, uh, or are you going in on something else? Uh, Beck said, What program do you use to write an ebook on? Well, um, nothing particularly sophisticated. You can do them in lots of different things. You can do them in Word if you've got clever skills to make it look good, but Word can be limiting. If you've got really strong design skills, you can do them on something like InDesign and then PDF it up, and an ebook can literally be a PDF. And in more recent times, there's systems like Canva that actually allow you to make pretty good looking ebooks. So any of those systems will do just fine. Um, Karen said, in this week's module, it spoke about online booking systems. Do you know of any that would be suitable for tradies? Um, there would be some, but I don't know off the top of my head. So let's just go and Google, can't hurt, and see what we can find. For Google for tradies. Here we go. Tradie pad, maybe. Book it live. Uh, booking software for tradies. So, yeah, there's quite a few on there. 
I, I don't know any and if they're any good. Uh, so have a look at those. Actually, was GeoOps one that worked with Zero Program Manager? Hmm. Maybe this was it. I know it integrates with Zero. I know a friend of mine used to work at this company and raved about it. Let's have a quick look. Okay, GeoOp, GeoOp, check out GeoOp. There are so many cool things out there, aren't there? Zero plus job management made easy, real time view, turn jobs in GeoOp into invoices, blah, 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 blah. Don't know if it does do that thing, but you could look into that more. Yeah, let's see, product. Works in with lots of them. I know this system, look into it more, had something to do with um, people on the road and that kind of thing who, who need to issue invoices while they're out and about. Uh, Karen said, could have Googled it myself, just sort of ask in case you had any experience in them for your customers. Yeah, Karen, I would love to work with more tradies. And my partner is a tradie or was a tradie until February this year. Um, and I find they're just not online at all and they're not even prepared to invest in it. So um, I really think if people are out there and can push them into it, that would be a really good thing. Look, it sounds like some of the issues some of you experience are, are all to do with going from the wrong URL. So if you go to, the key thing is guts.thetrainingcollective com.au and uh, if you go in that way I think a lot of your problems are going to be alleviated and if you are getting incorrect links it's probably from things on email which are definitely something we need to update if they haven't already been so I'll get the girls to go through the fine tooth comb when they are in tomorrow. Cool guys well that was quite a long session almost in half an hour over um, of course the conversation can continue in the Facebook group so drop me your questions through the week and we'll do our best to get back to you on them and uh, next week uh, fingers and toes crossed Paul will be back on board because uh, I'll be flying back on a plane at this time next week from New Zealand so I definitely can't take it but I can always queue someone else up. He's talking local SEO and every business that is in a local area that wants people to know they exist, that wants a free Google position, really needs to get on that. It's a really cool lesson. Don't miss it. So have a great week till then. Get all this stuff into place. Try and keep up the lessons, and you will be in a really great position in eight weeks' time when we finish the program. Good night, all. Thanks for getting on.